Welcome to the Sound for More channel. It's uh, Leo speaking. Today we are going to start the tutorials on Arturia pigments. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. As you can see, pigments at the moment is running in standalone mode, but of course you can run it as a VST inside your preferred DAW, like for example, Ableton Live or Logic Pro etc etc um, when you run it uh, um, in standalone mode if you click on the top left um, menu you have this option called audio MIDI settings of course those settings are not available if you run it inside your DAW because your DAW will dictate for example what to use in terms of audio um, device interface if it is used a MIDI connection and so on um, what you see in the settings at the moment are similar to the settings that you will see um, on a Windows machine. At the moment, I'm running pigments on a MacBook uh, with an M1 chip. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side for audio settings, you have a device which will be Core Audio for a Mac. And then you can uh, select under Core Audio what you have really configured inside your Mac. In my case, I'm using a multi-output device. What, very, what is very important is to ensure that the buffer size is uh, correct. Now, the buffer, buffer size um, will dictate, for example, if you will hear poppings or crackings. So if that is the case, increase that. So you have a, a um, bigger buffer. But of course, that means that your uh, computer or laptop uh, will take longer to process that buffer and you might see some latency as you play with your uh, and your synth. Um, so re remember to, to check that if you have uh, any problems and uh, modern computers should be easily be able to handle 512 or below as well in terms of samples. Next, you have a sample rate. Uh, by default, you can see 44 kilohertz, but you can go any higher, normally 44, uh, or 48 is great unless you have a particular reason that you want to go above that. Um, you can do a test on to ensure everything is okay. Perfect, it works. And then on the right hand side, you have MIDI settings. In this case, you can see I have a launch key, um, which is being configured. I have selected it so that I can play with it. And then underneath you have, of course, your, temper, your tempo. Uh, bits per minute, which the default is 120, and then you have button to increase or decrease that particular tempo. So um, this is where you should start when you first acquired uh, pigments and you have licensed it. So let's close that, and also let's close pigment um, completely. And the reason for that is that I want to show you pigments inside uh, uh, Ableton Live. Uh, as you can see, um, I have the light version and um, I have selected the first MIDI channel. You can see a default project and then, uh, or I should say a default live set. And then I, I activate monitor on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up pigments like so. And now it's loading up as a, a VST free plugin inside Ableton Live. And if you go now to the top left menu, you can see uh, that the audio MIDI settings have disappeared, right? So you can't really um, um, use them or change them because you have to go through your door, in this case, Ableton Live. The other thing which is uh, quite important to um, kick off is to have the right size window. And that is really dependent on your re resolution, what you are using. But if you say to choose more, increase it here under resize window or, or decrease it if it is too large. Of course, depending on the hardware that you have available. Okay, next I'm going to uh, play a particular pad and um, and I want to show you how, how it sounds. So let's see if we can find it. Um, here we go. And let's go for um, something like um, um, this Fallen Angel. Let's try this one. 
I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm going to leave you with some uh, performance play. Thank you very much. Bye.